to Word Addiction. This is your host, Reverend Lawrence Makumbi from Life Pool Chapel, Kitengala, the House of Faith. I'm glad and excited that you are available just to go with me as we read through the Bible. And today we are, by God's grace, in the book of Numbers, chapter number 30. We'll be handling chapters number 30 and chapters number 1, uh, chapter number 31, sorry. And I believe that it's going to be an interesting time in God's presence as we look into what the Lord has to teach us uh, today. And so in the same way, let me also remind you of our upcoming conference next week. It's going to be a wonderful time in God's presence in our annual conference dubbed Outbreak. Remember I said Outbreak, it's the Lord who gave me a word in the book of Deuteronomy, chapter number 2, verses 2, where God tells Moses, you have been scatting this mountain or you've been going around this mountain for too long. Break camp and move forth. And so every year we celebrate and we have this conference to declare the word of God over our lives that we need to bring break camp. Why? Because God desires growth in our lives. God desires us to grow from grace to grace, from faith to faith, from exploits to exploits. And I want to believe that this year, the Lord is going to stretch you and increase you and, you know, establish your life, your business, your vision, and help you fulfill your destiny. Nobody was ever created to be stagnant. Nobody was, was, was ever created you know, to be in a limbo. God wants us to grow and to move on. God is a God of movement. And so I want to welcome you in the next, uh, from, from, um, from, uh, from next week, which is the 1st of March, all the way to the 5th of March in our Outbreak Conference. And it's going to be a wonderful, wonderful time. We start, we kick off on Wednesday and on Thursday, our evening meetings, our, our conference begins in the evening, which is 5.30 p.m. to 7 p.m. And then on the 3rd, which is on a Friday, we are going just to bask in God's presence because it's going to be an all-day affair. We are kicking off at 8.30 with our devotions and we shall finish again at 7 p.m. Don't worry, breakfast is provided or rather uh, uh, 10 o'clock tea will be provided, lunch will be provided, 10 uh, uh, 4 p.m. tea will be provided and we're just going to bask here in God's presence to hear what the Lord has in store for us. And then on Saturday, ladies, it's going to be a wonderful time as well in God's presence. So all ladies will be welcomed. You are welcome for the Malkia conference that kicks from 9, p 9 a.m. in the morning all the way to 4 p.m. in the evening. My bishop is going to be there. It's going to be a wonderful time in God's presence. And again, on Friday, we're going to have our celebration service that starts from 9 a.m. all the way to 12 or 30 p.m. And so as you come to this conference, know that God has prepared choice servants for for you, my bishop, the founder and the general overseer of Life Pool Chapel, Bishop Weli Odendo, will be gracing the event. My friend Duncan, Pastor Duncan from RCCG Kitengela Life Center, is going to be here. Hi, myself, as your war host, I'm also going to be here. And other choice servants that the Lord has arranged to commission His word in your life. And so you can't afford to miss this. Book the day. It, and I believe that your life will never be the same again as you break the camp and get into the next level of your life, your ministry, your business, and in the pursuit of your destiny. So it is my prayer that are going to block those dates out from the 1st of March to the 5th of March, and it's going to be a wonderful time in God's presence. So why don't we pray? and begin our reading for the day. Heavenly Father, we thank you and we honor you. We are delighted and glad to be in your presence today as we seek to read your word. There is a Lord that you know you want to speak to us. And so we open our hearts, we open our minds, our spiritual ears to be open, to hear what you want to deposit in our hearts for the glory and the honor of your holy name. In Jesus' mighty name, we do trust, praying, and believing. Amen. Amen. So today I said we are looking at Numbers chapter number 30 uh, from uh, uh, chapter number 30, sorry, and chapter number uh, 31. And I believe it's going to be a wonderful time in God's uh, presence. So Numbers chapter number 30 verses 1. Then Moses 
spoke to the heads of the tribes concerning the children of Israel, saying, This is the thing which the Lord has commanded. If a man makes a vow to the Lord or swears an oath to bind himself by some agreement, he shall not break his word. He shall not do according to all that proceed. He shall do sorry, according to all that proceeds out of his mouth. So here Moses or the Lord is talking to Moses concerning vows that are made in the presence of God, and he says, if any person just opens their mouth and they make a vow unto the Lord, then they are to make sure that they fulfill that vow. And he says this that he shall do according to all that proceeds out of his mouth. So God says, you shall not do half, you shall not do a quarter, a quarter sorry, you shall not do three, uh, uh, you know, three quarters of it, but you shall do everything that you have vowed that you're going to do before the Lord. Or if a woman makes a vow to the Lord and binds herself by some agreement while in her father's house in her youth, and her father hears a vow and the agreement by which he has bound herself, and a father holds his peace, then all her vows shall stand, and every agreement with which she has bound herself shall stand. But if a father overrules her on the day that he hears, he hears then none of her vows nor her agreements by which she has bound herself as shall stand. And the Lord will release her because her father overruled her. So the Lord says here, if there is a woman who's making a vow and she's still in her father's house, if she makes the vow and the father hears and keeps silence, then that vow stands and the woman is to fulfill the vow. But if she makes a vow while well, in the presence of of her father or her father comes to hear about it and negates the vow and he says do you know what the vow that you've made as my daughter I negate it before the presence of God let's say a daughter says um, do you know what God uh, 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 I've made a vow you know to to do what to give myself to, to do such and such a thing and the father hears it he has the authority to say, do you know what, my daughter, whatever vow you have made before the presence of God, it will not stand or I am not in agreement with it. And the Lord will say, do you know what, let that vow not be fulfilled. And the woman will not be guilty if she does not fulfill the vow. And this tells you how the Lord honors fatherhood. This is how the Lord honors fatherhood. Why does he do this? Because as a young girl or a young or a girl that is under a father's house, they might be erratic or make an emotional vow that they have not yet thought about it. Yet the father who has lived long, who is considered to be a man of wisdom, hears it and knows my daughter does not have the capacity to fulfill this vow. Then... As the head of my house, I will come and tell my daughter, do you know what, sweetheart, the vow that you've made is not a bad vow. But listen, this is what it takes for you to fulfill this vow. Have you considered this? Have you considered that? Have you looked at this? Have you, have you seen that if you do this, then this will be able to happen? So as a father, I will have the authority to tell my daughter, listen, pray about it. Go and listen about it. That vow, it will not stand. And before the Lord, my daughter then will not have to be, you know, to be considered guilty when she does not fulfill that vow. Because as a father, I have stepped in and I've looked at it and I said, you know what? This cannot stand. The Lord will not hold her guilty. Verse 6. If indeed she takes her husband, well bound by her vows or by a rash utterance from her lips by which she bound herself, and her husband hears it and makes no response to her on the day that he hears, then her vows shall do what? They shall stand. And her agreements by which she bound herself shall also stand. But if her husband overrules her on the day that he hears it, he shall make void 
void a vow which she took and what she uttered with her lips, by which she bound herself, and the Lord will do what? Will release her. If she vowed in her husband's house or bound herself by an agreement with an oath, and her husband heard it and made no respond, response to her and did not overrule her, then all her vows shall stand. And every agreement by which she bound herself shall also stand. But if her husband truly made them void on the day he had them, then whatever proceeded from her lips concerning her vows or concerning the agreement binding her, it shall not stand. Her husband has made them void and the Lord will release her. Every vow and every binding oath to afflict a soul, her husband may do what may confirm it. Or her husband... Uh, uh, or, or, or her husband may make it void. Now, if her husband makes no response whatsoever to her from day to day, then he confirms all her vows to all the agreements that bind her. He confirms them because he made no response to her on the day that he had them. But if he does not make them void after he has had them, then he shall bear what? Her guilt. So he says, the same thing applies here. If a man hears a, the wife making a vow, he keeps quiet, then that vow stands and the woman is to fulfill the vow. But if the woman makes a vow and the husband hears about it and negates it or makes it null and void, then the woman shall not be guilty, neither will the husband be guilty. But now, if the husband hears that vow, and the woman does not fulfill that vow, or the wife does not fulfill that vow, then the man will also be held accountable and will also bear her guilt if the woman does not fulfill the vows. Verse 16. These are the statutes which the Lord commanded who? Moses between a man and his wife and between a father and his daughter in a youth in a father's house regarding vows. Vows are very detrimental when it comes to Christian living. Whatever vow you make before the presence of God, it is a vow that needs to be fulfilled. This reminds me of what um, the preacher talks about in the book of Ecclesiastes chapter number 5. He says, don't be haste to make a vow before the presence of God. Don't rush to make a vow before the presence of God. Let us read that in Ecclesiastes uh, chapter number 5. Yeah, Ecclesiastes chapter number 5. Let's just read it. It says, Walk prudently from verses 1 when you go to the house of God and draw near to hear rather than to give the sacrifice of fools. Now we will see what the sacrifice of fools is. For they do not know that they do evil. In what manner does a sac the sacrifice of a fool uh, be equal to evil? In this manner. Do not be rash with your mouth, he says, and let not your heart utter anything hastily before God. So it is a fool who goes before God and makes a vow hastily, whether by thought of, of the heart or by speech. Now listen, for God is in heaven and you on earth. Therefore, let your words be few. For a dream comes through much activity, and a fool's voice is known by his many words. Now listen to verses 4. It says, when you make a vow to God or a pledge to God, when you make a vow to God, do not delay to pay it. For he has no pleasure in fools. So if you have ever made a vow and you delayed to fulfill it, then guess what the Bible calls you? I'm not the one who has called you. Pay what you have vowed. In other words, make sure that you restitute or do what the vow you made, uh, you know, uh, uh, 
uh, the vow that you made. Make sure that you do as you vowed before the presence of God. And then he says this in verses 5. Better not to vow than to vow and not pay. So better not to vow than to go and make a vow and you fail to pay for that vow. And then he says this, do not let your mouth cause your flesh to sin. Nor say before the messenger of God that it was an error. Hmm. Why should God be angry at your excuse or at your voice and destroy the work of your hands for in the multitude of dreams and many words there is also vanity but fear god so these are the things that arise number one if you make a vow that you're not willing to fulfill or you delay to fulfill the bible calls us a fool number two it says this if you make a vow and you do not fulfill it god has got no pleasure in you why? Because it says, for he has no pleasure in fools. Number three, it says, you rather not make a vow than make yourself a fool before God. And number four, it says, when you make a vow, you have made your flesh to sin. So any unfulfilled vow is sin before God. And then number five, it says, uh, um, why should you be angry? Why should God be angry at your excuse? So the fifth thing is this, that you are making God angry anytime you make a vow and make an excuse not to why you've not fulfilled it. And then it says, it continues to say this, number six consequence. It says, and destroy the work of your hands. So every time you make a vow and you don't fulfill it, you have opened the doors for the enemy to destroy the works of your hands. It's simple. There are a lot of people whose destinies and visions and dreams never materialize. As a result of what? As a result of not fulfilling their vows. They end up destroying the works of their hands. For in the multitude of dreams and many words, there is also vanity. And then it says, do what? Fear God. Let me say this. There are a lot of decrees and prayers we make and they don't get answered because we have unfulfilled vows in our lives. You hear people say, I decree this, I decree that, and it does not happen. It is not that God does not want it to happen, but perhaps what you're decreeing, it may be lack of faith. You are decreeing something and you don't have faith. You may be decreeing something and there is a sin in your life. Or you might be decreeing something and it is not uh, uh, happening in your life because you are making a decree when you have an existing vow that has not yet been met. Listen to what the book of um, Job says. I believe it's in Job chapter number 22. Uh, Job chapter number 22, verses 27, yeah. Job 22, verses 27, he says, You will make your prayers to him, then he will hear you. Now, and you will do what? You will pay your vows. So you will make your prayers before God, and he will do what? He will hear you. But then you will have the responsibility to make sure that if there is any vow that you've ever made before the presence of God, that you have fulfilled that vow. Why? Verses 28. And this is the scripture that most of us believers quote. And when you're praying, you say, I decree, I decree manifestation. I decree that everything I've answered, it's going, I decree, I decree, I decree. Now, before you decree, the Bible says you pray, make sure that you fulfilled your vows or you've paid your vow. And then you shall decree a matter or you shall decree a thing and it will be established for you. So light will shine on your ways or revelation will shine on your ways. So if you're dealing with vows, 
Number one, you have to be a prayerful person. Number two, you need to make sure that if there is any vow in your life, you have paid it or fulfilled it. Then will you decree a thing and it will be established and then it says light will shine your way. In other words, you will be moving in revelation and revelation. There will be revelation in your life. And what does the scripture say? When there is absence of revelation, the Bible says where there is no revelation, people cast off restraint. In the book of Proverbs, in the same scripture, in another version, it says, where there is no revelation, people perish. So if you're not a person who makes vows and pays vows, then it means you lack access to revelation. And the things that you decree will never get fulfilled. Is there a vow that you've ever made before the presence of God and you've not yet fulfilled it? Don't be a fool. Go and make good your vow before the presence of God. Chapter number 31. And the Lord then spoke to Moses saying, Take vengeance on the Midianites for the children of Israel. Afterward, you shall be gathered to your people. So God tells Moses, I am giving you another assignment before you be gathered or before I take your life or before you die. So I'm giving you an, an assignment and the assignment is go and take revenge against the Midianites for the sake of the children of Israel. So Moses spoke to the people saying, arm some of yourselves for war and let them go against the Midianites to take vengeance for the Lord on Midian. A thousand from each tribe of all the tribes of Israel you shall send to war. So they were recruited from the division of Israel, 1,000 from each tribe, 12,000 armed for war. Then Moses sent to them, sent them to the war, 1,000 from each tribe. And he sent them to the war with Phineas, the son of Eliezer, the priest, with the holy articles and the signal trumpets in his hands. And they warred against the Midianites, just as the Lord commanded Moses. And they killed all the males. They killed the kings of Midian. And the rest of those who were killed were Eva, Rechem, Zur, Ur and Reba, the five kings of Midian. Balaam, the son of Beor, they also killed with a sword. This is the guy who was contracted uh, to cast the children of Israel. And the children of Israel took the women of Midian captive with their little ones and took as spoil all their cattle all their livestock and all their goods. They also burned with fire all the cities they dwelt and all their forts. And they took all the spoil and all the booty of a man and beast. So they raided the Midians. They killed the five kings of Midianites. They also killed Balaam, who was a sorcerer. And remember uh, the, the scripture we shall come, uh, well, is it in the book of uh, Leviticus or is it in um, Exodus? Look, the Bible says, you shall not suffer a witch to live. So Balaam was also killed. And they took, and the children of Israel, they, they took the women of Midian captive with their little ones and took a spoil all their cattle and everything that they owned. Verses 12. And they brought the captives, the booty of the spo and the spoils to Moses, to Eliezer the priest, and to the congregation of the children of Israel, to the camp in the plains of Moab, by the Jordan across from Jericho. And Moses, Eliezer the priest, and Moses, Eliezer the priest, and all the leaders of the congregation went to meet them outside the camp. But Moses was angry with the officers of the army, with the captives of thousands and captains of hundreds who had come from the battle. And Moses said to them, Have you kept all the women alive? Look, these women cost the children of Israel caused the children of Israel through the counsel of Balaam to trespass against the Lord in the incident of Peor. And, they were, and there was a plague amongst the congregation of the Lord. Now therefore, 
kill every male amongst the little ones and kill every woman who has known a man intimately. But keep alive for yourselves all the young girls who have not known a man intimately. And as for you, remain outside the camp for seven days. Whoever has killed any person and whoever has touched the, any slain, purify yourselves and your captives on the third day. And on the seventh day, purify every garment, every everything made of leather, every woven uh, everything woven of goats, hair, and everything made of wood. Then Eliezer, the priest, said to the men of war who had gone to the battle, This is the ordinance of the law which the Lord commanded Moses. Only the gold, the silver, the bronze, the iron, the tin, and the lead, everything that can endure fire, you shall put through the fire, and it shall be clean. And it shall be purified with the water of purification. But all that cannot endure fire, you shall put through water. And you shall wash your clothes on the seventh day and be clean. And afterward, you may come into the camp. So the, uh, Moses discovered, hey, the children of Israel have gone to war. He brings their leaders and he has a good word with them. He tells them, have you kept the women alive? says no why did you do this don't you remember when balaam was trying to curse us and the curse did not stand the next thing these people did was to make sure that their women have interacted with us and that we have started living a life that does not glorify our god and by doing this you remember when we read where Phineas, the son of Eliezer, you know, took a javelin or he took a spear eh? and he put it uh, uh, at the back of the man who was having, a, you know, sexual intimacy with a woman in the tent of the testimony. And there was a plague. And when the Lord saw what Phineas did, he says, oh, let the plague spread stop because this guy whatever he has done have made a covenant with him he's going to be a priest before me in his in these ordinances all the rest of his life so when the prophet when balaam the sorcerer let me say when he could not access the ability to cast the children of Israel. Then the next step was to open a door for the Midianite women to come and settle in the camp of Israel and make the people go astray. That's why they started worshiping Balaam. And you know, they started funny practices and the Lord sent forth a plague that destroyed the camp of the children, uh, the, 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 that destroyed the children of Israel in their camp. But when Phineas did what he did, the Lord made this, the, the plague to stop. So Moses is telling them, don't you even remember what happened? And he says, do you know what? Kill every young man and kill every woman who has ever known a man intimately. And only keep for yourselves the virgins or a woman who has never known a man. Now the Lord speak to, spoke to Moses saying, Count all the plunder that was taken of man and beast, you and Eliezer the priest and the chief fathers of the congregation, and divide the plunder into two parts between those who took part in the war, who went out to battle, and all the congregation. And levy, and levy a tribute for the Lord on the men of war who went out to battle. One of every 500 of the persons, the cattle, the donkeys, and the sheep, take it from their half and give it to Eliezer, the priest, as a heave offering to the Lord. And from the children of Israel's half, you shall take one of every 50, draw from the person, the cattle, the donkeys, and the sheep, from all the livestock, and give, and give them to the Levites who keep charge of the tabernacle of the Lord. So Moses and Eliezer the priest did as the Lord commanded Moses. The booty remaining from the plunder which the men of war had taken was 675,000. So here the Lord is telling them, take uh, one of every 500 of the persons, take cattle, the donkeys, and the sheep. 
take it from their half and give it to Eleazar the priest as a heave offering to the Lord, as from the children of Israel. You know, the Lord is telling them, now because the, your men have been, what is the word? They have been preserved in battle. Take from amongst them an offering to the priest. As a sign of saying, because the Lord has given us victory and he has preserved us, then we are giving this as an offering for diseases, you fortunum, retrenchment or being fired in your workplace, and you've never taken a thanksgiving offering or even taken a thanksgiving offering over your lips in deep in deep and genuine utterances before God to tell him, Lord, I thank you. I've been in an accident, but you've preserved my family or you've preserved myself. I've been going through a retrenchment, but God, uh, the people were retrenched, but you showed me favor by preserving my job. Or, you know, uh, uh, my business was, was under siege. But the Lord, you are faithful to preserve me. During the COVID era, there are a lot of businesses that went under. Were you thankful that the Lord kept you afloat during that a season? So this is what the Lord tells them to do. Verses 32. Then the booty remaining from the plunder which the men of war had taken was 675,000 cattle, 61,000 donkeys, and 32,000 persons in all, in all, of women who had not known a man intimately, and the half of the portion of those who had gone out to war was in number three, 337,500 uh, sheep. And the Lord's tribute of the sheep was a 675. The cattle were 36,000, of which the Lord's tribute was a 72. The donkeys were 30,500, of which the Lord's tribute was a 61. The persons were 16,000, of which the Lord's tribute was a 32 persons. So Moses gave the tribute which the Lord's, which was the Lord's. Eve offerings to Eliezer the priest as the Lord had commanded Moses. And from the children of Israel half, which Moses separated from the men who fought. Now the half belonging to the congregation was 337,500 sheep, 36,000 cattle, 30,000 uh, uh, persons, uh, th and 30,500 donkeys, and uh, and 16,000 persons. And from the children of Israel, half, uh, from the children of Israel's half, Moses took one of every 50, drawn from man and beast, and gave them to the Levites who kept charge of the tabernacle of the Lord, as the Lord commanded Moses. Then the officers who were over, who were over thousands who were over thousands of the army of captives of thousands and captains of hundreds, came near Moses and they said to Moses, Your servants have taken account of the men of war who are under our command, and not a man of us is missing. Therefore we have brought an offering to the Lord, that every man found of ornaments of gold, armlets and bracelets and singlet rings and earrings and necklaces to make atonement for ourselves before the Lord. Why? Because the Lord has preserved us and none of the men who went to war on Israel's sake, none of them succumbed to death or perished in the battlefield. Uh... So Moses and Eliezer, verse 51, Moses and Eliezer the priest received the gold from them, all the fashioned ornaments and all the gold of the offerings that they offered to the Lord from the captains of thousands and captains of hundreds was 60,750 shekels. The men of war had taken spoil every man for himself. And Moses and Eliezer the priest received the gold from the captains of thousands and of hundreds and brought it into the tabernacle of meeting as a memorial for the children of Israel before the presence of the Lord. Wow. We've come to the end of our reading today. But look, these people, they saw it.
that we have gone to battle. We have seen our fellow men, our enemies, fall in battle. Yet none of us, of all the men of Israel that went to war, none of us succumbed in the battlefield. The Lord has preserved us. And in them they thought, let us take also an offering for our own selves. And they took, took bracelets of gold and all these things, and they brought it to Moses, and they say, we, as the captains of thousands and the captains of hundreds, we bring this as an offering before the Lord because he has preserved us as, you go, as we've gone to battle and come back. This is a different breed of people. And this is why now the Lord is telling Moses, now, I am ready now to let you go and settle with your fathers because this is a new breed of people that have risen up who honor the Lord and know the ways of the Lord. We shall look at our chapters number 32 tomorrow by God's grace. But I want to say this. If there is any vow that you've never made before the presence of God, go back to it. Go and ask God, what shall I do? The first thing that you need to do is to fulfill the vows. When you are doing the book of, uh, is it Exodus? Uh, I remember somebody asked me, what do you do with an unfulfilled vows? The first thing to do is to make sure that you've made good your vow. Go before the presence of God, repent, and make sure that you've made good your vow before the presence of God. Don't be a fool. If there is a vow that you've ever made before the presence of God and you've never kept it, the Bible refers to us as fools. Don't fall that victim. Number two, don't destroy the works of your hands for making a vow and making an excuse of why, we, why you did not fulfill that vow. Before God, it is an abomination. Don't go that way. Make sure that every vow that you've made before the presence of God, you've asked for the grace to fulfill that vow. And don't go praying and decreeing a thing and wondering why is in declaring uh, stuff in my life happening. Because you may declare, I am healed. I declare, I am blessed. No, you are not healed. No, you are not blessed. If there is an unfulfilled vow speaking against you, then your decrees count for nothing in the presence of God. Amen. So we've come to the end of our reading. I want to believe that it has been educational, it has been a revelation, and that the Lord has spoken in your heart in a clear manner. And I do believe that we are going to have greater, greater days ahead as you continue to look at the scriptures by God's grace. So if you want to give us any information, any inquiry, any questions, the numbers are appearing on your screen. If you want to be a partner, I said you can use my number 0727952007 and we shall be able to chat from there. If you want to be a tither to give to this ministry, I call upon you to do so. If there is any thought for you to do that, it is welcome and do it and do it in a generous manner and with a cheerful attitude before the presence of God. You want to send in your tithe, you want to send in a seed, you want just to give a love offering. This is the till number for you to use for kingdom advancement purposes. The till number is 9527-37. The till number, I repeat, it's 95. Uh, two seven uh, three uh, seven and as you extend yourself to give i want to believe that the blessings of a giver shall rest in your life and that you shall see that the lord is is a um, is the God who abounds in all grace in every good works as he has outlined in his word. So why don't we pray? Father, we thank and we honor you for every gift that your people give, O God, into your work. How I pray that Jehovah Father, they shall receive a harvest for every seed that is sown, for every gift that is given. Lord, may they receive and harvest in increasing measure in the name that is above every other name. I bless their works, bless their families. I decree and declare, let the heavens be open over their lives. And Father, that those who have made a vows 
in the past and they have never fulfilled them. Lord, may you grant them the grace to realize the way the vows have got power in your presence and in the spiritual realm. May they receive the grace and the revelation to do as the season demands them to do. We give you glory and we give you praise for it is in Jesus' mighty name we do trust, praying and believing. Let's meet again tomorrow as we look at...